Hey guys, this is John from the Reaper blog. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with loops in Reaper. In this project, I've imported a loop, and it's not synced up to the project tempo of 120. It's a little bit faster. I'll play it back with the click track. So if we want to change our project tempo to match this loop, I like to just hover over the tempo setting in the transport bar and use the mouse wheel. So we know it's a little bit faster and I'm just looking here to see where the beats line up with the grid. So 128 looks good, let's play it back. So that's perfect, it's a 128 beat per minute loop. Now we're gonna set it back to 120 because we want to time stretch this to the project tempo. If we grab the right side edge of this item, we can see that it is seven bars and two beats long. If we hold down Alt and drag it out, we can make this fill fill eight bars. Playing this back now, it will be slower than the original, but locked to our tempo of 120. It follows the click track, perfect. So now I'm going to show you the project and track time bases. Opening up the project settings with Alt Return on the Mac, you can see here the time base for items, envelopes, and markers is set to time. We also have options for beats, position, length, and rate, and beats, position only. So I'm gonna show you position, length, and rate right now. So we already have this synced up with our tempo. If we wanted to change the tempo now, it's as easy as entering, we could set this to 130 now. And this item is going to follow the click. We can bring it up to 150. Or even down to 90. The more you time stretch, the more the audio quality will degrade. So working in this way is not always the best way. You don't want to go more than about 10 above and below the original tempo. The time base can also be set on a per track basis. Right click on the track in the TCP, come down to set track time base. It can follow the project time base. It can be set to time, which is minutes and seconds. Beats, position, length, rate, which will time stretch and keep the same start position and the same length, and beats position only, which I'll show you next. Over in this part of the project, I have a Rex loop uh, playing percussion parts. I have a kick track, a snare track, and a hat. And these are just samples laid out on the grid. The tempo in this section is 97 beats per minute. Okay, so the first thing I'll talk about is the Rex loop. Now, Rex loops actually don't follow the project time base or the track time base here. If I just right click this, I can bring up my media item properties and see that the item time base is set to beats position only. So there's actually three places to change time base in your project. There's a global setting in the project settings that can be overridden by the track settings and that can be overridden by the item settings. Okay, so this Rex loop was imported as slices. Uh, the slices are all grouped, so I can just grab this and move it as one. As I change the project tempo, this will automatically shrink and expand but all of the hits will always stay in correct uh, bar and beat position. Let's bring this back to 97. As for these other tracks, project time base is currently set to beats position length rate. So if I change this time to, let's say, 90 beats per minute, 
each of these drum hits are now going to be time stretched and we will lose a lot of the audio quality. So I'll play that back now. So we don't want that. We're going to undo that. Go into project settings again and change this to beats position only. Now with this setting, it's going to be just like the Rex loop. So this is always going to be locked to this position. Not really locked, but it's going to stay in this position if we change the project tempo. It is not going to time stretch now. So we change this to 90. Get these spread apart, but they stayed right on the grid lines. And that's what we want. And we can change this just with the mouse wheel here anywhere we want, and it will always stay in time. Okay, that's it for this one. Be sure to subscribe. Check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials, tips and tricks, articles, and videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.